maybe it means some other thing. Do you see how many ambiguities there are? There are some tasks that if stated in the algebraic setting are actually ambiguous. So for example, consider this task. Suppose you're given the Laplace operator. And again, I'll just try to make it purposefully confusing sound. So if you have the Laplace operator, maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not, but it's defined as the sum of the second derivatives. That's in Cartesian coordinates. Or that's with respect to, you know, the way you would probably be taught this in a class is that it's just this function. You, know, you wouldn't even use the term coordinates. You would just say, it's this operator in terms of x and y. If you have a function of two variables, it's this operator, right? And you wouldn't even have a geometric interpretation. Am I right? And then they would tell you, do a change of variables to pull a coordinates. And if that's all that's given, I don't even know what the task means. Because maybe switching to polar coordinates, if that was the definition, maybe it's now defined to be this. Right? Could it mean that? Changing the Laplace operator to polar coordinates? Yeah, maybe it could mean that. Maybe it could mean that you still evaluate this, but once you're done, you plug in how x and y depend on r and theta. Maybe it means that. Maybe it means that you have to take the function f in its original form, plug in how x and y depend on r and theta, and then evaluate this expression and see what you get. Or maybe it means to evaluate this expression and see what you get. Or maybe it means some other thing. Do you see how many ambiguities there are? Right? Maybe, maybe I could narrow it down by saying that it all comes down to whether you substitute first and then take the derivative or take the derivative and then substitute and those operations are not interchangeable. But I actually think it's more complicated than that. I actually think it's a very ambiguous, vague statement. Change of variables, unless it's specified more clearly, is a very confusing task. And it's not clear what's being asked of you. And I just know that for a fact because when I teach tensor calculus, it's usually a problem that I give in the first week, which is to express the Laplacian and polar coordinates. And it's just, a, it's just a widow maker of a problem. It's a humongous calculation, and it's a calculation where you can very easily do the wrong thing, and three quarters of the students do the wrong thing. And if you gave it to seasoned researchers in applied math, three quarters of them would do it incorrectly also. Because I think it's fundamentally vague and ambiguous. Does that make sense? But when we do this in a geometric setting, where the Laplacian would be a characteristic of a field that has nothing to do with which coordinates you introduce, that will once again give you an absolute reference that defines an object. And then from that absolute reference that has no coordinates, you can then translate it into different coordinates. And it may or may not be an easy task, but it's a very clear task because you know what it needs to match up with. You know where the agreement needs to be. Just like here, you know that these derivatives are to be evaluated at consistent points.